a lot of interesting GPU related news today. Uh, I'm gonna start with some things that are for sure, and then we'll move on to a bit of rumors about pricing, release dates, performance, all of that of both new AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. Let's take a look at this first though. This is related to FSR, which I've done a lot of testing on. Now this slide isn't what's exactly new, but some people might not have heard of it yet, which is that when FSR is running on older graphics cards, it can use a fallback to a floating point 32 process instead of using the floating point 16 process, which should be more efficient. Now, I, I saw this a while back and I wasn't sure exactly how that would impact performance, but we now have CapFrameX here on Twitter linking some uh, interesting testing here, saying that he was able to force off the floating point 16 support on a newer GPU, his 6800 XT, and then test the performance difference. And according to the slides here, by the way, links to all the uh, sources for everything today will be in the description of the video, as my subscribers are used to. Thank you, subscribers, you beautiful people. Anyway, uh, what it's looking like he's got here is the um, performance here using the floating point 16 and then rendering the same scene using uh, that floating point 16 turned off, so it would do the fallback. And we can see the performance numbers here are reduced. And I think that comes out to about a 7% or so uh, uh, difference here. And that's some, uh, some code used there uh, for that. Uh, yeah, claiming that's about 7% more performance when you can use the floating point 16. Now, what do I think about that? I think that's not a huge difference. I'm glad they're able to implement something that makes it work on the older graphics cards. So I'm, I'm glad they thought to do that and that, that it seems to be working. 7% isn't the end of the world, although I am interested if there's more testing on this because sometimes frame rate doesn't tell you everything one particular scene. Um, I'd, I'd like to see further testing on this. I, I may or may not be able to do any of that myself. Uh, I'm, I'm also hoping that it's delivering exactly the same image quality. To my understanding, it would still deliver the same image quality, just not at quite the same frame rate. Anyway, let's move on to some uh, more rumor-based stuff. Let's start with the future generations of NVIDIA. This is a day or two old, some of you guys might have seen it, but there was a flood of tweets and things, um, as well as some YouTube videos leaking some information about the future NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, for the 4000 series. So we've seen some claiming that we are confirmed that Ada Lovelace is definitely the next generation gaming card. Um, and then uh, saying that we're definitely on the TSMC 5 nanometer. He's 100%, but not sure if it's N5 or N5P yet. Now this is Greymon 55. I've seen leaks from Greymon before. I I'll be honest here that I don't remember off the top of my head what Greymon's track record has been for 100% accuracy. Now I do know that, however the heck you're supposed to pronounce this, Copite7Kimi uh, leaked a ton of accurate information about, about the NVIDIA lineup. Very, very accurate leaks um, about N N NVIDIA in the past for the Ampere series of cards. And that one's saying five nanometer no matter what. Um, but I think th there's some questions here about whether they'd do the Lovelace or the Har uh, Hopper architecture, Harper being a multi-chip design. And I think that it's basically saying, depends on what a AMD does. If it seems like AMD uh, would put out something too powerful for, for Lovelace, that, that Copite was under the impression that there could be a swap over to the Hopper multi-chip design. And then there's been some more speculation from Moore's Law is Dead on YouTube um, about what all of this might mean. And you know, you can pause your video and read through this if you want. To me, this sounds like a lot of kind of speculating just based on, well, if AMD does this or that, and I don't know, and a lot of just worrying about the names. So I don't wanna dwell, dwell there too long. But yeah, what we do seem to be pretty sure about is that it should be about a two year gap between the launch of Ampere and whatever they call the next NVIDIA 4000 series cards. So we wouldn't expect those until the end of 2022. I use this video cards article here as a source since they, uh, they summarize where a lot of these tweets and various things uh, were all at. Now let's jump to what I'm uh, most interested in right now since it's most immediate is how about this 6600 XT and 6600? What's the price of this thing gonna be? At least the MSRP anyway. And it's looking like here at NeoWin, they're citing their own sources. So 
I don't know who those sources are or how accurate they might be, although they claim that this information is about a month old. And pricing and things like that can adjust heavily um, as you move into launch. So take it for what it is. It's a source that I don't know, and apparently even them uh, are claiming this is about a month old. But they're saying that the 6600 XT would be MSRP 349, and f that's because its rasterized performance, it beats the 3060, which is MSRP 329, and then, but uh, not in ray tracing. Okay, so, so since it beats it in rasterized performance, they think they can uh, price it above the 3060 MSRP, but its rasterized performance isn't as good as the 3060 Ti. So they're basically gonna just price it between the 3060 Ti and the 3060, but um, it looks like they're thinking pricing much closer to the 3060 than the 3060 Ti. I would imagine that that could be reflective of where the rasterized performance falls, but it might also be taking, uh, taking into account uh, the ray tracing performance, since even the 3060 will beat it in ray tracing performance, and the 3060 offers four more gigabytes of VRAM. We're expecting eight gigabytes on the 6600 XT, whereas the 3060 has that 12 gigabytes. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the reasoning why we'd see this pricing scheme. And I think somewhere in here, they said that we'd expect $50 less on the 6600 versus the 6600 XT, which would put that at about 299. Now, these prices are better than some of the rumors we heard earlier, which we're expecting more of a $400 launch point for this. 349 seems much more reasonable. I would have obviously rather seen it priced at 329 just to just line up right there against the 3060. Um, but you know, 349 isn't crazy. And honestly, right now, why are we talking so much about MSRP? MSRP is still meaningless, probably for at least a few more months, if not longer. Let's hope everything settles down, but eh. Especially if this card doesn't have a, uh, isn't actually sold in a reference design from AMD, because if we're depending on board partner cards, they're probably gonna uh, place pricing of their models much higher than MSRP anyway. All right, uh, last little bit I've got here is um, is some speculation on the street pricing. Um, so this article is not in English, but I can Google translate it. This is from Cowcotland. I don't know a lot about this particular source, but uh, according to their sources, the price of the Radeon RX 6600 XT graphics card in stores would be more than 499 or even 549, and that's euros, not American dollars, okay? Uh, so that would be much more in freedom units. So yeah, that's, uh, th that's what we gotta expect here for pricing. All right, huge thank you to everybody who's clicked the join button on my channel. You guys are beautiful people. And uh, again, thank you everybody who watched the video. I hope all of you have an excellent day.